Welcome to the Golden State Media Contest Football Podcast, where we talk the latest news, rumors, and games of the NFL and college football, from the latest signings to this breakout star, and all the news in between. As always, I'm Jeremiah. Joined by Alex. We're back again. Yeah, man. You you good? You, you all fed? I'm all trip? fed. Yeah. It's delicious. Oh, yeah. What'd good you, food. What'd you, what'd you eat? Breakfast sandwich on a croissant and some chicken nuggets. Ooh, <coughs> and some all right. Fritos. Yeah. Okay. And some water because oh. I'm cutting soda out of my diet. Oh, that's good. That's good. Drink more water. Drink <coughs> I more drink water. a lot of water, man. How many? Well, how many? Uh, <laughs> how much water do you drink per day? I try to get my Fitbit wants about it's like three and a half bottles, so I try to drink like three or four a day. It's really like good. I forget, I forget the, the liters it wants or whatever. It I don't did. drink. I don't drink soda at all. I, I used to. I did more than I should. I need to stop. And I have. I have. I've been stopping pretty pretty well actually lately. Yeah. If if I don't drink water, it's usually coffee in the morning. Mm-hmm. And if it's not water during the night, it's usually usually beer. Well, I dr- beer, I don't like beer, know? so I drink a lot of water. Um, I like like punch, like limited made punch, you know. Hawaiian punch. Tropical punch. Tropical punch. Yeah, and the fruit and tropical punch. Oh. And then um, I I like. I like chocolate milk a lot. Oh, okay. Keeps yeah. my bones strong and everything. That's bone. another thing. I uh, I drink milk a lot, especially when I have PB and J. Okay. Yeah. But anyways, let's move on to some news we have on. Well, this week in a e- official report from ESPN, Arizona Cardinals defensive back Tyron Matthew said he wants to get paid as a top defender, mm-hmm. and he has some he has battle injuries. Yeah, he's Pat, been, uh, to say since, the least. Since, since uh, 2013, his rookie year. <clears throat> yep. So do you do you think he should be paid as a top defender despite being injury prone? I do. Yeah. Do I think he should because when he's on the field, that defense is is something completely different. Yeah. He, he's a ball hawk. He, he's, he has the footwork of a corner but plays safety, and he can come down. He likes to tackle. Uh, he's a turnover machine. He's, he's, a, he's a, one of my favorite – uh, defensive players. In the yeah, he's right a now. he's a dynamic player to watch when yeah, he's healthy. Yeah, yeah. He's and dominant too. Yeah, and he elevates that secondary so much mm-hmm. when he's on the field. When you have a player like Patrick Peterson on one side yes. and a safety like Tyron Matthew on the other side, you you can do a lot, man. They they when he's on the field, it's it really is another it's another type of defense. This day they, they played. It's crazy too because he can play safety and he can come down and play slot receivers too. But he can also guard tight ends for the most part. He's a smaller guy, but. He's so versatile in what he does. He plays. He played sub package, um, middle linebacker, not middle linebacker, but linebacker in a sense of kind of like that floating safety that Ed Reed and Paul Malu made so famous, and kind of what they're doing with um, Dayon Buchanan now too on mm-hmm. the opposite side. Yeah, um, they kind of moved him to that hybrid. He was a safety. He's a hybrid kind of linebacker now, and they keep Tyron there. It's at free safety, but he comes down and he plays in the in the box and he plays slot corner and he plays that kind of rover, um, go get him kind of, you know, intermediate position. He's so valuable to them as a player, I think, that he really should be paid at that level. Because, I mean, especially, too, he had that surgery Yeah. the first time coming out after college. And he came back just as good as ever, you know. And so the official, I feel like the team had a lot of faith in them and they, and they hate him and they like Tyron and what he does for the team. I feel like... It's kind of hard not to give him that money. Yeah, and I agree. He should get paid as a top defender. The reason why I say top defender is because he doesn't want to be categorized as a safety and corner, even though he plays those two positions. You know. Yeah, I mean, he he really is the definition of like a DB. You know, he's not a corner. Yeah. He's not a safety. He's a defensive back, and at times a sub package, kind of like linebacker. Like I was saying, he. And and for how how big he is too, he yeah, play, he a, plays yeah. a, a much yeah he bigger plays like size. yeah exactly he plays bigger than what he actually is he's like what five nine I'll look it up five, uh, that five sounds nine, about yeah, right five nine around two hundred pounds uh, well this is Matthew he was on his way to possibly becoming defensive player of the year last year yeah he was yeah, having a great he, year he, yeah he had five interceptions eighty nine tackles mm-hmm. and yes, seven, he is five nine yeah seventeen pass deflected. Deflected and eleven tackles for loss. Yeah, he compared that to his first two years. He had one hundred seven tackles the first yep, two years, mm-hmm. three interceptions, mm-hmm. thirteen passive. Pass. Yeah, he only got better. Yeah, he got know? better. At yeah, and and he like I watched a few games of his before he got hurt this year, 
and one of them being a Steeler fan, I watched the Arizona Cardinals Steeler game, and he he followed the re- he's playing a slot receiver. That's what made me re- reminded me he plays slot receivers. I forget the, res- the the player he was on, but he dropped back, opened his hips, ran with him as a sideline route, spun his hips around, undercut the route, and picked it off and got it, and toe tapped on the sideline. Like it was just. Ball skills you don't see safeties have because safeties oftentimes are picking off the long passes or the, you know, they're undercutting longer passes as opposed to this was like a maybe a, a ten yard at the most out that he was guarding on a, uh, maybe Wheaton if it was the slot you know kind of played it was or maybe even Brown you know and it was impressive his footwork was insane he looked very dominant just in that one play and that just kind of speaks for a lot of his season last year too. Yeah, and I, I was really bummed he got hurt. Yeah, I was really bummed that he got hurt. Also, I remember a game earlier in the season last year. Mm-hmm. I believe it was week four against the 49ers. Okay. He, he was a absolute stud in that game. Like, he, I think he returned a touch. He returned a interception for a touchdown. He had Who like, didn't in that game? And he, <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty bad game for them. I think he had two or three interceptions that game. I think he had two because had I, two. Think, I think yeah. Peterson had one. I think um, yeah, I know. Beth, I think Bethel had the other one. Yeah, because I know there was three interceptions, three or four interceptions. From there was Cap- four, and there was two four, pick yeah, sixes. Two pick th- sixes. Yeah, had he had, he had, yeah, he had them both, dude. He, the the, it's just tough to play against that guy when you have him in the middle. He kind of has so smart. Yeah, he has that. Uh, Troy Palmalu effect on that defense. He has, he like, has yeah, yeah the, the, he, he's, I would say he's closer to an Ed Reed type player because. Yeah. Like, yeah. Paul Amalu was super versatile, but he didn't – he reminds me more of the body of Ed Reed, you know, that that that, that type mm, of – he's yeah. a little faster, he's he's a little sneakier. Like, I wouldn't be surprised to see him do what Reed did where he would get, like, you know, he would get on the end of the line scrimmage and he would hide behind those big defensive ends or those linebackers and he'd blitz off the corner, you know. That – like, he, he – that I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, when they talk about the good safeties in the league right now, you have guys like – Chancellor is a strong safety, and you have guys like Earl Thomas. And I would be surprised if you look at him as one of the premier, yeah, you know, safeties in the league right now. Yeah, he's definitely a premier defensive backs, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think you have to put him as a defensive back because he. You do, but yeah, I mean, in, in terms of a, of, the, of a base position, I would say he yeah. he is a safety. I mean, at least that's what Madden has him listed. Yeah, that's as. what Madden. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you could do sub packages that, like that. That's what he got he drafted as too. As yes, because well, yeah. he played safety in he college said, yeah, at yeah, LSU. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but he's also unsure if he'll come back for the season opener. Yeah, he said he's not going to rule it out. He's not ruled out. I mean, but it was such a late injury. Yeah, it was, and it's tough to come back from those injuries too. That's his second ACL injury. Well, he says so far that it's going. The rehab is easier than it was the yeah, first time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, well, you know what to expect. Because he tore tore two ligaments in his uh, first knee injury. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you, well, you know what to expect. Um, that this time around, you know, you know what you're going to have to do, and the kind of things you're going to have to do to help that knee get better. So, I'm that's a, that's a, that's a statement I'm not really surprised with him saying. You know what I mean? Unless he means it in a completely different kind of form, like oh, it's easy because it's not as bad this time or something weird, you know. But it sounds like he means it's just he knows how to handle it now. Yeah, he handles adversity pretty well too, especially his past in LSU. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. he. The way that he came back from that is just amazing. Also, yeah, no, I mean he had a yeah. and he had a really good rookie year too. He did phenomenal rookie year, and he was phenomenal at LSU despite some character issues that he had there. Yeah, he was crazy at LSU. Yeah, he man. was. He that's was, that's where he got the nickname the Honey Badger. Yeah, he was like he was one of the best college football players in the nation. Yeah, when he, he was with LSU that that yeah, year. He, the last if, year he played there with them before he if, took the year off. Yeah, if he if he didn't have those character issues. Character issues. I think he would have easily been first round pick. That and he had the he took the year off. Yeah, he did. Um, that year off kind of hurt him. It yeah, dropped his value. But dude, that steal. getting him getting steal. him in the third round, that's absolute, a steal. Yeah, absolute steal. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I'm not surprised that they got him with Patrick Peterson being a good friend of his coming from LSU. Yeah, um, I'm not surprised at all that they went and got him, and it honestly was a draft pick. I wish teams that I was a fan of would have went and got you know. He's just a killer guy, killer player. And I definitely think he's somebody who deserves top money because when it's all said and done, he might be one of the best defensive players in the league. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's hard to be, be paid as the best defensive player in the league because there's somebody, there's, you know, defense alignment like J.J. Watt, who's the best defensive lineman. And there's like Luke Keekley, who's probably arguably the best middle linebacker in the game. 
And then there's guys like Sherman or Revis um, who hang their hat on being the best corner, you know. And then there's the whoever that happens to be the highest paid safety right now, you know. Um, it's hard to be the highest paid defensive player when there's so many subcategories, yeah. but I definitely believe he could be paid as one of them. Yeah, and I agree totally. You know, he's on a team that's actually on the Super Bowl or bus season, I I think. You know, they're one of those teams – yeah, it's either Super Bowl or bust because they're up to that level now. They're going to win 10 yeah. games. Yeah, they're going to – yeah. That defense is going to yeah. propel them. Yeah, and Carson Palmer's playing great. All right, well, we will come back with a word from our sponsors with some more news. Oh, welcome back to the Golden State Media Concerts Football Podcast. And speaking of injured defensive players, Houston Texans outside linebacker Jadavion Clowney said he's 100% healthy heading into this season. Yeah. So, <laughs> doubt it. You know, Clowney is entering his third season in the NFL. He's only 23 years old. Oh, so, do you, do you consider this as a make or break year for him? I kind of do. I mean, he's got one year left on his rookie contract, I think, and he hasn't really flashed something in a you know in in a full season. Has he even played a full season? No, he has exactly. Not. Yeah, he, he has trouble staying healthy playing a full season. Yeah, and like you and I were talking about earlier, guys like Khalil Mack who were drafted in the same yeah. draft as him. Jadavion Jadav- Clowney has four career sacks. Yeah, Khalil Mack got five in one game in December against, against the, the eventual Super Bowl yeah. champion. I like, mean, they, they they of their issues, the O line is definitely one of them. Speaking but. of speaking of that draft, um, coming into that draft in 2014, I didn't even think Jadavion. Clowney was better than Mac. I, I thought Mac was a certified stud. I thought he was the best player in the draft. Well, it was hard to judge. Well, he it, played it, at Buffalo. It's it, hard yeah, exactly, to judge the competition level. Exactly, but I thought he was going to end up being a better pro. And, and as of right now, he, as of right now, he has shown. Absolutely, yeah. He yeah. Has shown Khalil that. Mack is, is and, unstoppable, and he is progressing to possibly the elite defensive players in the league. Yeah, Khalil Mack's yeah. unstoppable, and we'll, yeah. and we'll get a little bit more into him and and one of his, and some of his. You know some other teams later, but yeah, uh, I agree. No, I think, yeah, this year I feel like this is the kind of this is a year that's setting up like, do the Texans want to pick up his fifth year option? You know, is he going to be a player that's? I mean, he's first overall pick so far. If his career keeps up the on the course it is right now, he's a bust. Yeah, it's just he hasn't shown what he showed in college. He hasn't shown that dominance off the ball. He hasn't shown that explosiveness. And, I mean, that could be because he was injured. He's just not the same player. But he just hasn't shown what you want from a number one overall pick. Yeah, he has disappointed, even when he was on the field. Yeah. yeah even when he was on, he has probably been the most disappointing player in that draft so far, I think. I would have to look at the top ten again, yeah, too. Yeah, I will have to do that see. also. But on the top of my head, mm-hmm. that's what I say. I mean, you drafted him with the assumption that you have J.J. Watt, who is arguably the most – Dynamic, probably and the best defensive. Best player. defensive. Well, yeah. what I mean is he he's so he can do it all. Yeah. he can play all three positions, four positions even on the defensive line. He's so <laughs> he, he dynamic. Can play tight end if he wanted to. He's played fullback yeah, and tight end and running back. Yeah. Man, he's. I think he threw a touchdown last year too. Yeah, not, yeah two seasons you know, ago, not no, this past yeah, he, season. Yeah, but he threw one before in his career. I think yeah. you know, like he and he played tight end in, in high school. Yeah, you know, um, he's just so versatile. Is the word I was looking for, having him and then. The, under the assumption that the, the guy they thought they were getting with Clowney, like they were setting up two, they were setting up like a Justin Tuck, OCU, Manura, yeah. 2007 kind of situation, like with two it, killer outside forces on the defensive line that would just be powerhouses. Which, which the, the Clowney and Wallet combo, it made sense at the time on paper. But oh, absolutely. As, as of now, though, it just hasn't, <laughs> as just hasn't turned out that way. And the Texans, they have to decide if they want to keep him, I think soon because usually a trend that the Texans have the summer after a player's third season they usually extend the first round picks like they mm-hmm. signed JJ Watt who was drafted in 2011 they extended him 2013 Whitney Marcellus yep merciless Marcellus merciless I'm sorry merciless that's, that my that's mom a, thinks that's one of the best names in football it is a good name merciless that's, that's a Whitney merciless yeah. a great defensive player name he was also he was also extended after the 2014 season after being drafted in 2012. And DeAndre Hopkins, who we talked about a little bit earlier in the show. Last show. Oh, was it the last show? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. It was the last show. 
It's okay. Yeah, it was the last show. Okay. A little bit in the last show. That's okay. He actually, they picked up his fifth year option just in case they can't get a contract done in time. Absolutely. So yeah. They have to decide if they want to keep him or not. And this is, like I said, this is, re- I think this is the year for that. This for is, sure. This, this has, this is the make or break year for him. Like, I know he's only 23 years old. He's he's young enough to – he's a young player. But we keep forgetting he's been in the league for two years. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like, three. Almost three, yeah. Technically, I count it as like one year basically because he missed the whole season. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of see he's only have one year NFL experience even though it's he's heading to his actual official third NFL season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that was a brutal injury he had when he tore his meniscus. In yeah, the first and game. understandable yeah. if you don't if you don't come back the same, you know, that is a very brutal injury and it takes a lot. I mean, like we said, he missed his whole first season pretty much. Understandable if that's something that you can't really come back from, you know. But that being said, at the end of the day, you know, it's a business and they're going to have to decide if they think it's worth keeping him, you know. Or if they want to re-sign him, try to get him to actually show that force he had in college and sign him to, like, a low deal. You know, former first-round pick, you don't expect four sacks in almost three seasons. And I don't mean first-round pick, like, first overall yeah, pick. Yeah, first overall pick. You know, um, there's players, Jarvis Jones has four career sacks, and he's heading into his fourth year. He was the 18th pick, you know. You're the first round pick to first overall pick to come in and have sacks, and you have four, and you haven't even played a full season. There's some, there's some issue there. You know, yeah. there's there's some some room to be nervous. Yeah, and don't forget about the hype that this guy got when. Oh uh, my god, I, it was after, it was I insane. Think, it, it, I think that's kind of like what drove him to being number overall. Yeah, like kind of like the hype that he got on the internet with that tackle mm-hmm. when he was at South Florida against which, Michigan. Yeah, which I still think was. Heck of a play! Oh, he blew that guy's helmet right off oh, his head. Oh, dude, that was, it was a—he was, he was an exciting player in college. So he watch. sent that guy back to kindergarten. <laughs> you ever yeah. seen? You ever seen uh, Little Giants? Yeah, oh, I love the Little Giants. That kid gets tackled, and he—he's like, he sent him back to the third oh, grade. Oh. He's, all, he's all talking <laughs> oh, about I like his the, when he has the football on backwards. Like, I can't see what this thing on. Oh yeah, his <laughs> helmet, the helmet gets stuck on his head. Yeah, yeah that's a great. Movie. Oh, it's a great movie. But yeah, he knocked him—he knocked him back to the second grade, man. He knocked him back to the second grade, or like uh, the longest yard when. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, mm-hmm. when he got hit uh, by that one dude on the uh, Mean Machines. Yeah, the Mean Machines. he told him, he's like, hey, you know what he said to me in the library? Yeah. And then, you know, you know yeah, if, you've I, seen I remember the, well. if you've seen it, if you've seen the movie, you, you know, know what, what you know what happens you know, to Stone you know, Cold. You know, you know what happens to Stone Cold. He's like, like you know, I thought he yeah. himself. <laughs> oh, man, that was funny. Yeah, that's a good uh, movie. I like the uh, movie. That's uh, like the last good Adam Sandler movie. Yeah, you know what it was? It, man, he, he's had some... He's had some disappointments. Well, you want to know why it was good? Because it was about football. That is true. It's about football. Man, speaking of Adam Sandler, I don't want to mean to go on a tangent here, but uh-huh. did you happen to see his uh, latest film on Netflix? No, I haven't watched an Adam Sandler movie since, like, Grown Ups. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I, it's a, it's okay. It's a typical <laughs> Adam Sandler movie. That's all I got to say. I'm good. Right. I'm good to skip that. <laughs> all right, just skip that. Okay, but, yeah, anyways. Yeah, man, like, that hype that Jadavion Clowney got – out of college is uh I mean it was reasonable. It was like Manzel hype. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It, it was compared to a little bit as Manzel. Like the thing is, people saw Clowney as a actual first round pick and Menzel he was kind of On the it, bridge. Was de- it was it was it was debatable that he should have been drafted in the first round. But yeah, the hype around him was crazy. And I remember a lot of Raider fans wanted Clowney. Hey, I have one I have two late. Two really good Raider, f- yeah, like I, friends. I have, I have, Raider a, lot, fan I have friends. a lot of friends that are Raider fans, and they he was on Clowney. Him. I'm sorry, he was on Cleo Mack from day one. I was on Cleo Mack from day one. Um, I thought he was really good. I thought he was the better prospect into that draft, anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he had more of a game. It wasn't just explosive. But I don't know. I mean, clearly, you know, Cleo Mack is is you know he's he's the only player to ever make All Pro at two separate positions. Yeah. So he clearly should be the one to get paid. He's gonna he's gonna get paid pretty 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 uh pretty hefty pretty hefty oh yeah pretty hefty paycheck. he's gonna get paid yeah oh my god yeah oh yeah but we have one last bit of information for you guys today on our news front uh, we're just taking one last quick break here at the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast and we will be right back 
And welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Thank you for staying with us. For our last bit of news today, Jeremiah, you remember yesterday, well, last episode, I should say, we were talking about the Pro Bowl move into Orlando, Florida. And what's the best thing about Orlando, Florida? Disney World. Disney World. Speaking of Disney, today we're going to cover some of our picks for the Cinderella teams heading into the 2016 NFL season. So we pick teams as teams to make the playoffs, not Cinderella teams to make the Super Bowl because that's just a lot of speculation. But teams that we looked at as improved um, that are very close to that playoff level. So I have four as opposed to your seven. <laughs> we do have a <laughs> well, few that are I, similar. Well, I actually, I actually have a uh, top five with two teams that barely missed the cut. So okay. I'm, I'm going to just go with that. <laughs> That's your normal thing. You did, you did that with the <laughs> I did that the with the rookie. Yeah, I did. I did. But yeah, I, it's just it's so hard. You that know? seems it's fair. Just, you know. So I got four teams. I have, yeah. two, I have four teams, and I'll give you my, my reasons for them. And then Jeremiah also shares two of my four. So you're going first? So I'll go ahead and go okay. first. My first team being the Raiders. Oakland Raiders revamped that defense. You're going to have two new starting safeties there. You have Reggie Nelson. You're going to have Carl Joseph. You have Sean Smith starting as your number one corner now. Khalil Mack again showing up. He, they got Bruce Irvin from the Seahawks. That defense, it looks really good on paper. And the offense yeah. had them in a lot of games last year. They finished 7-9 and nine last year. You know that, And like I told you in, in numerous episodes, that could have been 9-7 and seven, you know, easily. Oh, easily. And with, yeah. the, with the unknown kind of outlook on the AFC West this year, it very well could be the Raiders' year to, to push and get into the playoffs. So that's my number one choice. My number two choice, and again, these aren't in any order. This is what I wrote them down as. Chargers. It is hard for the Chargers to not make the playoffs. In the last 10 years, they haven't had very many bad seasons. They've had a couple back-to-back, but you remember they used to kind of have bad seasons, like mediocre, and then they make the playoffs. Mediocre, then they make the playoffs. You know, um, that's just kind of what it seemed like. So Chargers, I have them down. Phillip Rivers, you know, you're you're working the offense a little better. Um, The defense has a lot of first-round picks starting in that defense, so the potential's there. I have next the Jaguars, who we have talked about plenty on this show about. Yeah, um, we, t- we talk about them a lot. <laughs> yeah, about being yeah, a team but, that. But for good reason, though. You know, exactly. There's a lot of news that come out from them. Exactly, recently. yeah. And so a, a team that we've been talking about taking that leap, and uh, in that AFC South, it's not the greatest division. You have the Titans, you have the Texans, you have the Colts. You know, um, all didn't really – show up last year you know you have Osweiler you know starting a new chapter with Houston who knows how that's going to turn out so far you have a lot of questions with the Titans roster overall and then the Colts didn't have the greatest year last year but you can try to bet on Andrew Luck there you know but the Jaguars their offense they were 5-11 and last year their offense I'm sorry I meant to, meant to mention the Chargers were 4-12 and so yeah a lot of improving to do their last plays too yes they yeah. were in, but that was a pretty, you know, the Chiefs had a great year. Yeah. The Raiders, like I said, were almost a 500 team there, and obviously the Super Bowl winners. But the um, the Jaguars, they were 5-11. and Their offense won them a lot of those games. The uh, the main thing was their defense that lost a lot of the games for them. <coughs> Excuse me. And they really addressed that in the draft. So uh, that's going to be a fun team to watch. It's going to be an interesting team to watch um, around, you know, October. Yeah, getting into November. I think I think like yeah, sitting. mid mid November to December. I think they're going to be quite a team. Yeah, seeing where they're yeah. sitting at, seeing what kind yeah. of what they shape out to look like. Yeah, they're actually quite a fun team. This past like December November. Yeah, to watch. Yeah, they oh, were yeah. they're they're really fun. They're really competitive. Oh yeah, and yeah. then my last team would be the New York Jets, who narrowly missed out on a playoff spot in the last game of the year. Actually, if they won, they would have been in. They lost to the Bills and they were out. So they finished ten and six. I think this really hinges on the fact uh, that if Fitzpatrick comes back or not. Uh, if Fitzpatrick comes back, you have Fitzpatrick back in the lineup. I'm saying that a lot. You have him back in the lineup. You have Brandon Marshall still. You have Eric Decker still. You have you know key players that that led them to the playoffs. But it was a lot of that was the defense, which is still heavily intact. So I think that they were definitely a team right there. You know, right outside the playoffs, obviously. And I think they're probably the closest to really getting right back. I would say they're the Jets and my Raiders. The Jets and the Raiders are my, are my my main picks there. Yeah, there's some good choices. I actually have a couple of those teams on my list as well. Mm-hmm. Like I got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, they were five and eleven last season, like you said. Yeah, um, gr- good offense, potentially to be great this season. Potential, 
big potential. That's a strong word, potential. Mm-hmm. Defense should be a little improved despite some key injuries there. They got Dante Fowler coming back. Miles mm-hmm. Jack, there's a chance he might come back. And Jalen Ramsey, he – there's a chance he can play this season, not right oh, away. Oh, no, yeah. It, it, it not looks, right away. It looks good so it looks, far. It looks good on paper, and they also have some offseason signings in that defense. And yeah. the thing is, they actually were 5-8. and eight. You know, They were not that far behind from uh, winning the AFC South. They, I think they were like one or two games away, and they had a lot of divisional yeah, games. Yeah, something like that. They had a lot of division games left, and they actually lost three games to end the season. Like you said, they if they had that defense to compete against those teams, mm-hmm. then I think could they could have. Story. They could have been a different story. Yeah, we they, they Tower wouldn't be a Cinderella team, <laughs> and uh, yeah. and also also have a team in that division as okay. well. I got the Tennessee Titans. Okay. Yeah, three and thirteen last season. I love the combination of Marcus Mariota, DeMarco Murray. Even though he had kind of a down year last year at Philly, and Derrick Henry mm-hmm. being a third down back, he can possibly emerge as the true number one back. And that defense improved dramatically last season from 2014. 2014, they were 27th in total yards allowed. Defense finished 12th, 2015. They're tinkering with the top 10 throughout the whole season. Yeah. You know, they I think they had a couple key injuries. Yeah, there's some key. Yeah. They would have got hurt. Yeah. And, and, uh, I agree with you. I think the offense has definitely improved. I am uh, I think that. The only question mark is probably their receiving core. Yeah. Yeah. I think DeMarco Murray had an off year in, in Philly. I think it wasn't the right running style for him. Yeah. Uh, but I still think that defense has a lot more issues than, you know, you, you can only have – I guess like sixteen or twelve? Did you say twelve? They're three and thirteen. No, no, the uh, oh, oh, they're twelfth. Oh, 12th yeah, overall 12th overall, yeah. That's not horrible, but when you're deep, when but, your offense no, is middle ground, too, yeah, it's hard to win a lot of but games. That wasn't a big, big improvement for them. Oh no, they were they were yeah. atrocious the year before. Yeah, and they're they're steady improvement. So yeah. definitely, okay. that's a good choice. Definitely an interesting team to keep an eye on. Uh, moving on to the list, I also have the Raiders. On my list, um, I actually want to talk about their offense. You talk about their defense. I agree. With everything that you said about their defense, but their offense I want to talk about. Okay. I think they possibly have – they have the franchise quarterback in Derek Carr, possibly a top five re- – no, I think – no, a top five receiving duo in Michael Crabtree and Mark Cooper. You know, okay. th- these guys, they they were like studs on that offense. And Michael Crabtree finally looks like he improved – Big last season. Back Sk- to that. Ba- you know, Super back to year back form. to yeah, back to that Super Bowl year form when you know he had a couple, he had a down year in San Francisco the previous year, and they're in a tough division. Um, and yeah, they are in a tough. The division. tough division, but they have a defense to compete in that division. They, they really went, do. Yeah, and I think Carr can solidify himself as the top quarterback in that division by the year's end. He has that potential. Even well, though yeah, they, he's competing against right now the likes of Mark Sanchez, exactly Alex that, Smith. that we don't we don't know if Passion Lynch going to we don't know how he's going to perform. So that's why I'm, I think uh, Sanchez is the starter going. Yeah, in. going in, but you know so I think Rivers Lynch. Is, Lynch. I'm yeah. sorry, Rivers Sanchez, Sanchez and, and Alex Smith. Yeah, and Alex Smith. I think he has the chance to be better than those guys. Rivers is only the one I kind of have the question. Yeah, that, that's, Rivers, that's Rivers. Yeah, he's getting. They'll win getting, four games, but he'll yeah, produce. Yeah. Okay, and moving on. I also also have the Chargers as a Cinderella team. Okay. For all the same reasons and that you did, but I also want to point out if they have a good year from Melvin Gordon, yeah. you know, who's had a kind of a dis- kind of a disappoint, yeah, disappointing rookie season. Keenan Allen, good going receiver. back to yeah, he was on dude, he was on pace for heck of a year, and Antonio Gates, Hunter Henry, who they drafted, and who you and I were high on, yeah, we were we were really high on him, yeah. <laughs> And then moving on, I also have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Interesting pick. I yeah, could, I, I, I could see them yeah. competing in a few years. I, I, I think the defense needs a little bit more. Yeah, work. they they were like 500 around the uh, mid October November range, and they just they're a young team, you know. With but I like them going into the season. Okay, I like them going into the season with uh, Jameis Winston. They had Doug Martin, Dougie. He uh, played really well last he year. He ca- he came back alive. Yeah, and I love the receivers that they have there, and Vincent Jackson and Mike Evans. Mike Evans, he's just been 
Lights out. He's been he lights out. Oh, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, those are my top five teams. And the teams that barely missed the cut are the Bills and the Rams. Okay. Yeah. Both. Both. I would. I, I like both yeah. those picks also. But, yeah. So, it's a, that's my list. All right, I like it. I <laughs> yeah. like it. That's not bad. You know, we're, we'll have to we'll have to see how it goes. You know, those teams are definitely teams that we have to keep an eye on, you know. But today we are done. And we'd like to thank you again for listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. You can visit us on iTunes for new episodes each week. And you can find us at gsmcpodcast.com uh, as well as on Twitter at gsmc underscore football and Facebook at the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. You can even go on the iTunes podcast app and just search GSMC. And you'll find all of the wonderful shows from our network. Yeah. There's GSMC Sports, MMA, Movies, Entertainment, and Tech so far. So and, far. And it's only yeah. growing. So yeah, it's only growing. Take a look. Take a gander. Anything you want. Yeah. We got you covered. I really, uh, I got to take a listen to your sports podcast. Yeah, I also soon. do the sports yeah. podcast. Yeah. And yeah. I'll also be and you taking. Do, and you do soccer, too. I'll be helming yeah. soccer as well. Man, you, man. <laughs> you working, man. I'm like, working. I, I don't sleep. Uh, uh, but always, I'm Alex. Man. And I'm Jeremiah. And we will see you guys next time.